mistakes in your past don't define you. What matters now is God's purpose for you. Get ready to swim deeper, to go further, to work harder, and to climb higher than ever before, becoming the man you've always wanted to be. It's never too late, and you can start that journey right now. Are you willing to step into the fire, ready to face your Goliath? Are you prepared to put in the work? Walk in biblical manhood by becoming more like Christ. Enjoy good food, great fellowship, and a godly message that will push you to follow Christ's lead. Invite your dad, your son, your grandchild, your neighbors, your co-workers. It's time to gather with other men of God. It's time to stoke the fires. It's time to replicate. I know we got a lot of visitors here tonight, and uh, we're just so blessed and honored that you are here with us tonight. Uh, we're about to get to the real heart of replicate. Replicate means discipling others and becoming a disciple and learning how to make disciple makers out of others. How many guys here have been in D groups or every man a warrior? Raise your hand. Okay, we got a few. Keep those hands up for a second. So if your hand's not up and you're sitting next to somebody that is and you want to learn about discipleship, that's who you need to talk to. Um, can we give a hand to the people that prepared the food, the barbecue, and the worship music? Keith, uh, Keith Chrisman told me that the guy who's been smoking that barbecue got here last night. He slept in his truck. And uh, I think they were started at 6 o'clock this morning, getting everything going, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, my name's Chris Brawley. I'm um, one of the leaders of the men's ministry for Stuart Heights, among others. Um, and uh, I, I just want to introduce you to our speaker tonight. Um, I serve in a um, community known as Trace Diaz. Uh, who here, uh, raise your hand if you've been a part of Trace Diaz before. Uh, it's a wonderful um, retreat uh, just to help you get back in touch with the Lord. And uh, it's a good way to get recalibrated for believers. I really recommend it. And back at the first of the year, um, I was the uh, servant. And every uh, week in the two months leading up to it, uh, we go out and we meet once a week. Denny Brown's here. He was one of the professors. Uh, he knows what I'm talking about. And Chris Counts was here. Uh, he was meeting. And I had never heard our speaker before. I was, uh, if you're curious, uh, my service role was the head toilet scrubber. I was in charge of four other janitors um, and loved it, loved every second of it. <clears throat> I did. I hear you, Chuck, laughing, but I did. Um, and we didn't have our spiritual director quite yet. We had a couple of spiritual leaders, but it's, it's a trifecta. And they couldn't get um, the main one that they were trying to get. You know how things are. Life just gets in the way of so many things. Um, uh, the other things get in our life and choke out our uh, time to be able to serve the Lord. And uh, I was thankful that it worked out that way because about four meetings in, maybe it was three, um, Pastor Brandon Chastain was uh, there that night. I didn't know who he was. I'd never met him before. And what he said, uh, the, the Lord just spoke right through him, used him uh, as a vessel to say exactly what I needed to hear that night. And I was just so moved by it. And, um, and just him as a personal, just as a man, uh, I said right then, I, I've got to talk to Keith and Brian uh, as soon as I get to church Sunday and say, have we got a speaker for Replicate yet? Because uh, I really want to um, ask this guy to do it. And it took several weeks for him to finally commit, actually. Uh, it wasn't the easiest thing in the world, but uh, I'm glad he's here. Uh, he was a spiritual director for Trey's Diaz for a number of years, a couple of years, and um, now he's here with us tonight. I hope you guys will all give a warm welcome to Pastor Brandon Chastain tonight. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Sounds a little hot up here to me. I don't know how loud it is to you, but it's hot up here, so... Uh, and if I'm doing something wrong, just let me know. I'm sure I am. Uh, let me say thank you so much for the opportunity to be here. Uh, I don't know but a couple of you in here, and uh, that's all right. If you know Jesus as your personal Savior, then we're family. And uh, 
So thank you for allowing me to be here. I'd like to say thank you so much to Chris. He's been, uh, the hospitality that he has extended has been uh, simply amazing. And uh, I'm very thankful for that. That's in the floor now. It may get in my way earlier, later, so I moved that. Uh, Chris has been very hospitable, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, but I'm more excited about preaching God's Word than I am anything. Uh, I don't take this calling lightly. I'm 50 years old, and God called me to preach when I was 16 years old, and I'm still trying my best not to foul it up when I get up here. Um, but I'll tell you this. Um, I'm just no country boy from Dalton, Georgia. Ain't nothing special about me except I love the Lord Jesus Christ. And I know he loves me, and my name's written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. And uh, what you'll hear tonight, it will be the Word of God. It, just, you, it ain't nothing about Brandon. It's about Jesus. So uh, I'll preach you the Word of God tonight. And uh, if I don't, you see me afterwards, and we'll, we'll get it straightened out. We'll find out what's wrong. So, um, I got some guys that's real good uh, friends of mine that's close to me. I want to say thank you guys for coming up. I really appreciate it. Uh, I'm just getting the nerves out of the way right now, okay? Uh, if you've been here, you know what I'm talking about. I was telling Greg earlier, uh, although I've been preaching for a long time, I'm thankful that I still get nervous about it. The Bible says it's a, it's, 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 it's a, it's a dangerous thing just for the fall in the hands of, a, of, a, of a, an angry God. And I just, I'm humbled by the calling that he put upon my life. We're going to be in Acts chapter number 27 tonight. Tom, don't get too mad at me. Uh, I told you I was going to start off reading in verse number 21. I would really love to read verse number 20 tonight. So if you can't put it up, I'll still read it to you. Uh, go home, read this whole chapter when you get a chance sometime this week. I'm going to do my best to bring you up to speed uh, on what's taking place. Uh, but I thank God that we've got opportunities to come together as men, as brothers, uh, to help hold each other accountable, to support one another, uh, but to help one another disciple other people. You see, we can't do it in and of ourselves. Uh, God knew that. Uh, if we could have done it on our own, the cross would have never been necessary. So uh, I think the nerves are just about gone, so let's dig in. How about that? Uh, Acts chapter number 27, I'm going to start reading in verse number 20. Uh, so let's read. And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared and no small tempest lay on us boy don't miss this right here all hope that we should be saved was then taken away that's a tough place to be in isn't it now, some of y'all may not have ever been there, but I'm going to tell you, I have. It's not a good place to be. Preacher, we're here talking about discipleship. That don't sound like it's got too much to do with it. Let me help you out. Can I do that? I understand discipleship is, is about us showing the world God. It's about being like Christ. It's about like walking uh, like Jesus did. It's about spreading the good news of the gospel to all the entire world in order to hear. And, and, and there's, a, there's a lot to discipleship, but it's basically, uh, it's basically founded on giving the good news of Jesus Christ to others. It's simply being Christ-like, being a disciple. And to me, sometimes being Christ-like, the hardest thing is not showing people Christ. The hardest thing is me maintaining my hope when I can't see Christ. You with me? The Bible says that in many days, I'll bring you up in a minute. In many days, there hadn't been no sun. There hadn't been no stars. That tells me that they have experienced perpetual darkness. And I'm just like the next man. I love to lay down when there's, there's, there's no light, there's no sound, and shut my eyes and get some peaceful sleep. But in many days, I need to see some sunshine. You with me? In many days, I get sick and tired of the doom and gloom, agony on me. If I had no bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Any of y'all remember he haw
But the writer says that he came to a place where all hope was gone. I want to preach for the next 15 minutes, for the next two hours, whenever, till God's done with me tonight on this thought. Some anchors to hold to in a dark and dreary place. Can we do that? Thank you. Verse 21, but after long absence, since Paul stood forth in the midst of them and says, Sir, sirs, plural, ye should have hearkened unto me and not have loose from Crete and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve. That's good information right there. He said, and whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, you must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Verse 25 says, Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe, God, that it shall be even as it was told me, how be it we must be cast upon a certain island. But when the fourteenth night was come, and we were driven up and down in Adria, about midnight the shipmen deemed, the shipmen deemed that they drew near to some country, and sounded and found it twenty fathoms, and when they had gone a little further, they sounded again and found it fifteen fathoms. Verse twenty nines were. The fault for the message comes from, Then fearing lest we should have fallen upon rocks, they cast four anchors out of the stern and wished for the day. Father, we love you so much tonight. We thank you for the praise and the worship, Father. There's nothing like lifting hands, God, to a holy God and praising and worship you. Thank you, Father, Lord, for the opportunity of praise and worship tonight. I thank you for your word, God. I think it's established. It's settled in your heavens, God. I pray now, Father, as we look into your word, God, that you would, uh, that you would hide me in the shadows of your cross. And, God, that you would be magnified tonight. I pray, Father, that you'd transform every word that comes out of my mouth into the ears of all that listen, Father, that it would be exactly what needs to be said, what needs to be heard. I pray, Daddy, that you would be magnified, that you would be glorified, and that you would be made famous tonight, Father. We love you and we thank you, and we ask all these things in your sweet son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. If you read this entire chapter, you're going to find that the information's actually given that the ship that they're in is going to be torn to pieces and there's nothing going to be left of it. You'll find that. If you hadn't read that before, go home, read it. You'll find I'm not making it up. So let me bring everybody up to speed where we're at. Here, there's no sun. There's no stars. There's darkness. They are on a ship. They are in the middle of a body of water. They do not know which direction they're going. It's no small tempest is what verse number 20 says. They are in the typhoon of their life. It's dark. They don't know which way's up. They don't know which way's down. All they know is it's a storm and they're just they're at the mercy of the storm and all of a sudden there's this guy named Paul who is a prisoner on this ship who really doesn't know a whole lot about shipping he don't know nothing really about the water uh, you'll find that also when you read chapter number 27 and he makes this ridiculous ludicrous advice he says, be of good cheer. <laughs> Man, that makes absolutely no sense to me. That statement at that moment in time has about as much business being there as a bar soap and outhouse. I mean, it just don't belong. And what's that got to do with me, preacher? So glad you asked. Are you a child of God? Can I see your hands? Have you been saved? You're a child of God. Watch a beautiful sight. 
And you, 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 you're in this group here called Replicate, and, and we're trying to be better disciples. Is that right? How many of you in here tonight, your life is absolutely peaceful and perfect? Can I see your hands? None? Well, we're in the right place then, ain't we, brother? God's message is going to be good. Preacher, how can this help me? How can this message help in this, this atmosphere? And we're, we're talking about discipleship. I want to tell you, the, the hardest thing for me to maintain my sanity, to be a disciple, is trying to find Christ when I can't see him. And that, that takes place when we're in the middle of what? Storms, which is what we just read about. Is that right? I mean, is everybody, everybody's got all their bills paid and your finances are good. Some of y'all may can say that, but some of you can't. How I many of you kids is in the very best place they've ever been at in their life? I mean, they're, they're, they're okay and you ain't got to worry about them. I mean, they're financially sound, they're healthy, they're good, they're making great decisions, they're making no poor decisions. They're in heaven. Brother, you, they're in great place. That's exactly right. Some of us ain't got the best marriages. Some of us ain't got the best careers. Some of us ain't got the best job. Some of us ain't got the best friends. Preacher, I'm really sick and tired of you telling me what's wrong in my life. I'm just trying to get you to where we're at tonight so you can get some hope, okay? Bible's teaching me in this scripture here that this ship that had some 276 men on it was in a horrible place, in a horrible position. They were in a storm. And here's some crazy guy standing up saying, be of good cheer. Probably, they probably looking at him about the way some of y'all looking at me right now. Paul makes some, gives some pretty good advice. He says, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but the ship. You're in the middle of the sea. You don't know which way you're going. There's a storm. And the only refuge you have, which is the ship, you just found out it's going to be destroyed. And you want me to smile about that. The Bible says that because you are a child of God, because you have your name written down in the Lamb's book of life, that you shall suffer persecution, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome them, is what the Word of God said. It ain't no different. Paul just saying a different way than what Jesus said, that we will suffer persecution. And I want to tell you something. When we're trying to disciple people outside the walls of the church, when we're trying to disciple people inside the walls of the church, I want you to understand this. The main time they're going to look at you is not when everything's fine and perfect and, and, and glorious. It's when everything's going wrong in your life. Is what he got different than what I've got because when I'm walking through hell, the last thing I want to do is smile about it. Be of good cheer. Hey, probably a few of them like the throat punched him that night. Ship's going to be tore all pieces, but you're going to make it. Let's get to it. We got four anchors. Y'all ready? All right, I'm ready. So Y'all may not be. I'm ready. Here we go. Then fearing, verse number 29, then fearing lest we should have fallen upon rocks, they cast four anchors out of the stern and wished for the day. Here they are. They don't know, they don't know what's going on. They just know they're in a storm. And, and the Bible said, uses the word fathoms. And, and, and what happened was they took a rope and they had something heavy tied to it and they would drop it down in the water until, until uh, it hit ground like you would an anchor. And then they would mark that and they'd pull it up and they would measure it and they'd see how, much, uh, how deep the water was they was in. And the Bible says they'd done that once. They went a little bit further, and they dropped it again, and the distance was shorter, and that told them that they were headed towards land. They didn't, have, they didn't have no idea. They didn't have no idea if it was a beach or if it was a rock wall. Don't you know the outcome to you and I is so uncertain sometimes? 
But I'm here tonight to remind you that God sees yesterday just like he sees today. And he already knows what tomorrow's going to have, what's going to happen with tomorrow before today even closes out. And when all this has happened, these guys, they actually do a pretty good thing. The Bible says that they all went in the stern of the boat. It's the back part of the boat. It's the part of the boat that's the, 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 the most steady. It, 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 it's got the, the most stability of the boat is in the back of it. And it says that they threw out four anchors and wished for the day. Now, I want to give you four anchors tonight. That when you find yourself in unpleasant territory, when you find yourselves in the darkness of your walk with Christ, when you can't see Christ, when you can't see no reason to keep trying to be a disciple, how can I maintain my, my, my integrity? How can I keep going, preacher? I'm going to tell you, you need to throw some anchors out, and the first one that you need to chunk out into the stormy waters is this right here, the anchor of past performances. If I'm headed, Brother Chris, if my, if my boat is going in this direction and the water's getting shallower as I go, I don't know if that's a word, but I'm saying it's shallower, it's getting less deep, and I'm going in that direction, I, I ain't the smart, sharpest tool in the shed, but I think I need, to, I need to slow myself down as much as I can. So the first boat, first anchor I'm chunking out of the back of this boat is in the past. Preacher, you telling me I need to start digging in the past when I start going through uh, troubles and trials? It's a pretty good place to start. Let me help you out. No, I'm not talking about past performances of you and you and you and me. I'm talking about past performances of God. Because these guys can't do nothing to help themselves. They've already proven they've done all they can do. And, and, and sometimes we get in situations where we ain't got a clue what to do. We're, we're just trying to keep our head above water. And one of the things we need to do is look back at what God's done in our lives in the past. Is that right? Hey, man, you better believe it's right. It works for old Brandon, I'll tell you that. There's times when I can't see God in front of me. I can't see God right there in the middle of my life. I can't see God in my marriage. I can't see God in my church. I can't see God even if I close my eyes. But I can always look back and I can see the performance of God in my life even when I didn't see him back there. I can look back and see what he'd done for me. It's a good anchor to chunk when you don't know what's going on in your life. God, I don't know what's happening, but I'm just going to go back to what you done for me yesterday. I'm going to go back to what you done for me uh, two years ago, whenever it was. I tell you, men, it's, it's something that a lot of us don't like to do, and that's become vulnerable before one another. I know we're men and we've got to have that facade and that perception of we've got everything under control in our lives. Each and every one of us has a place in our past where we were weak, where we failed, where something went wrong in our life even when we were doing everything right. Happened to you, preacher? Yeah. Yeah, I was just pastoring a church. I was just studying the Word of God for my sheep. I was just preaching to them every Sunday and every Wednesday. I was just going to see them in the hospital. I was just visiting them when they were sick. And the payment I got was for them to attack my children. For them to tear down my children. Tell them to their face what they thought about them. Their response to me preaching them the word of God was an elder in the church approaching my wife. And he thought he could have his way with her.
Midnight preacher, yeah, I've been there. When I couldn't see God, when I didn't see any certainty, when I didn't see any reason for going forward, been there. When the youth leader thought he could take advantage of my 16-year-old daughter, been there. I'm just wanting you to understand. I'm not up here preaching something to you and asking you to do something that I hadn't already done and I hadn't already tried. I've walked through hell. I've walked through the pits that the devil's laid in my my life. I've walked through hell. But I can look back at that moment when I just described to you and I can see the performance and the faithfulness of God. And as much as I hate it, sometimes I've got to revisit it. Because it's the only anchor I can find sometimes. Past performances of God. Has he been faithful, men? Amen. Has he been faithful? Has he been good? Has he always done what he said he would do? Yes, he has. When it's dark, men, when it's dark, When things don't add up in your life, just throw out the anchor of past performances of God. I want to tell you something. I promise. I promise, Eric. I promise when you throw that anchor out, it'll grab a hold of something. It'll grab a hold of something. Anchor of past performance of God. Second anchor. Preacher, you're beating a dead horse. I'll move on. Second anchor that I'd love for you to chunk out that I think we can find in the Word of God. Is the anchor of accountability. Bible says we confess our faults one to another that we may be what? Healed. Talking about brotherhood, reunion groups, accountability. I want you to go home and read this text. Even if you've already read it, I want you to go home and read this chapter. You're going to find this. There comes a time in, in this situation where the boat is being ripped to pieces and the men are thinking of jumping overboard and the scripture tells us this right here. The statement is made, nobody jump overboard. If all of us don't make it, none of us makes it. I ain't making it up. It ain't Brandonology, it's theology. Go home, read it. We're supposed to be tough, Walt. We can handle it by ourselves. I don't need no help. Really? Well, I wonder why Jesus chose 12 to walk alongside of him. I'm going to tell you something, brother. If Jesus needs help, you and I do. If Jesus needs accountability, you and I do. I'm chunking that anchor of past performances, but I also have come to realize this. God saved me in 1981. I was an eight-year-old boy. I, I ain't always lived right, but I, I, God saved me a long time ago, and I've been in this a long time, and I've been preaching since I was 16 years old, and I've come to, uh, to find the, this to be true. I need you guys to help me make it. I need you guys, and you need me. You need each other when you're at those places that you don't know what's going to happen. When you're in the storm that Paul described in this chapter right here, you need to reach out to somebody. Now, I ain't telling you go and air out your dirty laundry to the entire world. But I'm going to tell you one thing. This man sitting right here in his green shirt, his name's Greg Thornton. When I was going through all that crap that I was going through when I was pastoring that church, people attacking my children, people attacking my wife, and I ain't done nothing but preach the word of God. 
when I wanted to throat punch them, when I wanted to kill them, I'm just, hey, you'll find that one thing about me. I'm transparent. I wanted to kill somebody. I found myself in my duck boat with that boy right there, and we was floating down the we was floating down the river doing some duck hunting, and I had had it up to here with it, and I needed somebody. I needed somebody to help me. Did I not tell you everything right there? Guys, find somebody that you can trust. Find somebody that's a man of God. Find somebody that'll help you carry both your heart and your burden. Because you ain't never going to be a good disciple if you don't. I ain't never going to be a good disciple if I don't. Thank you, Brother Eric. Anchor of past performances. The anchor of accountability. What about the anchor of hope, Brother Walt? <laughs> Let me help you. <laughs> Some of y'all looking at me kind of weird. <laughs> I imagine these guys hoped for a good outcome. You with me? I mean, sure, they may have been a few Debbie Downers in there that already had themselves in the grave, but most of them probably was hoping for a better outcome, a good, a good outcome. You, you with me? The Bible teaches me that if I have hope in this world only, I am of all men most miserable. I'm reminded of three Hebrew boys, Meshach, Shadrach, and give me a goat. Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. Y'all remember them fellas? You know, if before they got thrown in that fiery furnace, I believe they had already chunked both these anchors. I do. I mean, as, asking, asking me to give up my regular food and live off some other cultural diet, that's not going to happen for me. I'm sorry. I need my white beans and cornbread. And I'm going to have them. But these three boys here had got to a place. You all know this. I'm just reminding you tonight. They got to a place, brother, where life and death was only two choices. Life and death. You can either bow down and worship somebody else other than God, or you're getting chunked into the fiery furnace. You're dying. Well, that's a bad situation, ain't it? I'm talking about the anchor of hope. I, hadn't, I, I'm, I know where I'm at. And, and these guys make this statement right here. Even if God don't save us, he's still God. That's hope. Even if God don't see me through this, I need you to understand something, King. He's still God. And when you and I come to these places, we've got to have that same anchor. We've got to have an anchor of hope of saying, God, if this don't turn out the way I need it to, the way I want it to, the way I expect it to, you're still God. The ability, the fruition of God's ability is normally not seen until we experience our inability. You with me? Lazarus, I'll give you a Bible for it. Lazarus, four days. See, if you'll read your Bible and you'll study biblical times and you uh, study custom times, 
it wasn't impossible for somebody to come back to life within the first three days. Some of y'all looking at me like a calf looking at a new gate. Go home and study your Bible. But at four days, human ability was, was thrown out the window. Human couldn't help no more beyond that. Beyond the third day, human ability was gone. But is that not when God's ability come to fruition? And he had to do nothing else but obviously be specific. If he didn't say Lazarus, every dead body in the world would have rose that day. He said, Lazarus, come on, buddy. You laid there too long. The anchor of past performances, the anchor of accountability, the anchor of hope. Man, don't tell me, don't tell me Abraham didn't have no hope when he was marching up that, that, that mountain. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us that he said, Hey guys, me and the lads going yonder, and both, both of us will be back. That's hope. That's hope. And the last anchor. I'm about done. I'll let you guys go. The anchor. And this, to me, it just kind of goes right in, hand in hand with the anchor of hope. The anchor of God's perpetual promises. See, brother, the Bible teaches me that, that, his, that his word, this right here, is already settled in heaven. Can't be changed. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but, but what it say about this word right here? Remain, never pass away. Paul said that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him. Preacher, did you get this anchor out of this scripture? Sure did. I read it to you. One of them guys told Paul, said, Paul, you've already been told that you've got to stand before Caesar. <laughs> you with me? So he knew at that moment that this wasn't going to be the end for him because Caesar wasn't on that boat. John chapter number 10. My sheep know my voice, and I know them, and they follow, and I give unto them everlasting life, and they shall never perish. No man is able to pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which is greater than all, no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, for greater is he that's within thee than he that's within the world. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Be not weary and well-doing, for in due season you shall reap if you faint not. Faint not at my, at the, faint not at my, at my tribulation for you, which is your glory. I can go on and on and on and on. God's promises, his perpetual promises. Hey, when you don't see nothing but hell, just know that God says you ain't going to stay there. He, you ain't going to stay there. There's a really cool thing that took place when Jesus died on the cross. When you read the word of God, you'll find out that he took a little trip to that place. And when he got there, when he got to hell, he said, you don't deserve him keys. Clicked them right on his belt. Looked at, looked at hell and says, you ain't got no authority no more. He looked at death, got your keys too, buddy. He looked at the grave, got your keys too, boy. And he walked off with three sets of keys to death, hell, and the grave. And when he says that when you find your place in hell, you won't remain there, he means it. 
He's got the keys to walk you right out. I'm going to finish up with this story, and they're going to come get me an altar call. Me and Greg was fishing. Greg wants to do, if it's outdoors, he's going to do it. Doesn't matter. If it's outdoors, he's going to do it. Greatest outdoorsman I know. Hunting, fishing. We're fishing up at what's bar? Was it at what's bar? And yeah, we're up there fishing at what's bar. We're normally there at like midnight or something, you know. We're up there stripe fishing. And uh I mean I know how to fish, you know, I like to go. And and anchors is an anchor. You know, there's a lot of times I've just tired, tied half a cinder block to a rope, and that was my anchor. You with me? Well, that, that, that's not Greg. Greg's got an anchor that I didn't know at this very moment in time that he's kind of partial to. We're up there, and all them, that water's churning and bull, and we're fishing for stripe. We're not getting a lot, and he's like, let's just float on back and do a little fishing back there. So we're just... We're just drifting. We get to a place, and he says, drop the anchor and stop us right here. And I dropped the anchor, and we kept drifting. And I really didn't know what took place until he stood up out of the chair and told me that the end of the rope wasn't tied to nothing, and there went his anchor. And he began to tell me how precious that anchor was to him. And in my mind, I'm just wanting to know how much it cost. It's dark, current's blowing, it's back. His anchor's under, I don't, 20 foot of water, I guess, I don't know. I didn't lower no fathom. <laughs> Greg jumps up there in the front seat and takes his troll and trolls us back up there to where he thinks the anchor's at. And he grabs a fishing pole and he gets a loose line and he starts tying a little old treble hook to it. And, and in my mind, I'm thinking, I'm on a boat with an idiot. <laughs> and no doubt that's what he's thinking too. And I asked him, I says, Greg, what are you doing? He says, I'm, on, I'm, I'm getting my anchor. I'm speechless. I'm looking at this vast body of water. There's an anchor and 20 or 30 foot of rope laid on the bottom of the, the, the up there to watch bar. The current's blowing and we can't see nothing. And he's got this little treble hook that's like three quarters of an inch wide. And I'm thinking in my mind, you're wasting our time, man. Just let me buy you a new anchor, dude. And he drops that thing down, reels it up. And I'm like, oh. He drops it down and reels it back up. And like on the third or fourth time, I'm not making this up, guys. Up come the rope. And this turd eating grin on his face <laughs> and again I'm, I'm like how in the world did he just do this I'm thinking this is God <laughs> I tell you that story to tell you this right here When you throw those anchors out, hold on to them with everything you got. David said, the battle's not mine, but thine. Don't be like me and just throw the anchor out and let the rope go. 
I told you earlier that I'm as transparent as they come. Somebody get me a song if you'd come on. I'm as transparent as they come. I'm not going to. I'm not going to stand up here and I'm not going to preach and tell you that these anchors will work in and of themselves. You have to do your due diligence. You have to do your part. There's times I don't want to read the Word of God, but I do. There's times I don't want to walk into the house of God, but I do. There's times I don't want to go pray for people at the hospital, but I do. I'm not tooting my horn. I'm tooting God's horn. I'm just making a point. Hold on to the rope, guys. Father, I love you. Daddy, you are beautiful in everything you do. And God, there's many of us here tonight, Father, if not all of us, it's in the middle of a storm and we hadn't seen the sun in 14 days. We ain't seen no light. But God, we jumped in the back of the boat and we thought we're going to throw out some anchors. And God, we just need to ask you to help us to hold on. God, there's somebody, if there's somebody here tonight, Father Lord, that's in trouble, God, love on them tonight. Let them know that all of us men are here to love on them tonight, God. They can't make it on their own. They don't need to try. You don't expect them to. Help us all, God. Take your word, Father Lord. Plant it in the seed. Plant these seeds in our hearts. Let them bring forth your fruit. We love you. I ask you in your sweet son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's all stand. You sing. You need to come. I have journeyed through the long dark night out on the open sea by faith. guys can go ahead and be seated. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Patrick. I'm the campus pastor here at the Saudi Daisy campus. Uh, I know it was a bit of a trek for some of you, so welcome. We're glad you made the trek this evening. We had a wonderful evening and fellowship. And, and as Brandon talked about, we do need that accountability. Uh, we need each other. And that's one of the things that uh, I've been put, uh, in, that falls into my purview, as Brian would say, uh, is groups and discipleship. Uh, my email address was on the tables earlier, but if you didn't see it, it's real easy. It's patrick at stuartheights.org. If, 
you want to be a part of a group, if you want some accountability, if you want me to help you along that path, just send me an email, and I'd love to get you uh, going in that direction. Let's all stand, and we will close in a word of prayer. Rumor has it that they boxed up the desserts, and they are outside, so grab a dessert on your way out. Just a rumor, though, so I don't, don't, don't come back to me if they're not out there. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you this evening for the beauty of your scriptures, for the beauty of your word, for the beauty of the promises that you give to us. Father, I just pray for uh, each and every man in this room. Pray for each and every man, man that we are connected to. Father, I pray that as we go through life and as we go through the storms that life often brings, Father, that you will help us to remember who you are. Father, that you will help us to look towards you even when we can't see you, even when it's difficult to see you. Father, that we will continue to have hope. Father, that we will trust in your sovereignty. As we see in this passage, Paul was encouraged because he knew that you were sovereign and that you had a divine appointment for him with Caesar. Father, we know from reading more of Scripture of the things that Paul did while he was there waiting to be on trial to go before Caesar. So, Father, we uh, I pray that we will also, as we go through the storms of life, Lord, that we will be encouraged because we know who you are. We know that you have a plan for our lives. And as Brandon mentioned, and as we're going to look at in the month of July, that you are God and you are good no matter what happens in our lives. Father, help us to focus on you. Help us to remember who you are and what it is that you've done for us. Father, help us to read the scriptures as we look back at the promises you've made in the past and how you have proven yourself faithful and faithful time and time again. When we're in the midst of those storms, it's hard to see that. It's hard to remember that. But Father, you have given us your holy word to encourage us and to remind us of what it is that you've done throughout history. Father, we thank you for the hope that the gospel offers. Father, we thank you for the local body that we call church, that you call church. Father, we thank you that we can come together, together with other brothers and we can uh, share our burdens, that we can pray for one another, that we can encourage one another. Father, I pray that you will help us to lean into that. It is our tendency as men to push away from that. As Brandon talked about, to, to look like we have everything together. But Father, I pray that you will help us to lean fully into the idea of community. Father, help us to overcome any uh, obstacles that it's there help us to overcome any stigma that may be there with gathering together father i pray that you will continue to lead us and guide us father we thank you for all that you do we thank you for everything that you have done for us father and as we go from this place father i pray that we will go with the mindset of telling others who you are and what you've done of of going to share who you are and the hope that comes with the gospel of jesus christ father and again as we go no matter what's going on in our lives today, what may be coming tomorrow, Father, I pray that you will help us to trust in you so that we can sing as we did earlier that it is well with our souls because of who you are. Father, we thank you that you don't leave it to us. We thank you that you don't uh, put a set of standards out there that we have to follow through with to earn our salvation, but that you sent your one and only Son to die on a cross, to pay the penalty that we could not pay, that you loved us that much. So Father, help us as we leave this place to remember that and to go into uh, the world in which we live and to share the good news that you have sent to us. Lord, we love you and praise you. We ask these things in your son's holy and precious name. Amen.